Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday, March 3rd. It's time to go on the record. 20 years on Capitol Hill and a legacy of leadership, but last fall, voters decided not to send Mike Capuano back to Washington with the smoke clear where he stands now. Call the debate before the debates, how Democrats should run in 2020. The Cohen factor, bombshell testimony before Congress, but is the damage fleeting or fatal to the president? Let's go on the record. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to OTR This Morning, the first Sunday in March. I'm Ed Harding, along with Lisa Price, political reporter Jenna Wu. Thanks for joining us. Our guest this morning is former Massachusetts Congressman Mike Capuano. He was born and raised in Somerville. He served in Congress for two decades, 1999 to 2019, former mayor of Somerville, a graduate of Dartmouth College and Boston College Law School. It's great to have you, sir. You know, do we do we call you congressman? Do we call you mayor? Since when did you ever give me a title? Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Michael. It was, it was pretty much, yeah, Michael. Michael. My mother, yeah. Michael. 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 But what do Democrats do with this? Um, what do you think is the thinking of some of your former colleagues right now? Well, I think this is what they've wanted to do from day one, which they have the hearings, get it out in the public, and, and see what comes out in the wash. I mean, well, we all know that Mr. Mueller has done a long-term investigation, and that will hopefully come to an end in the not-too-distant future. At the same time, the House has a responsibility to do some of this oversight. I'm glad they've started it. Uh, it should not have been delayed for two years. Um, and the fact that they've started it, who knows where it'll go? And that's part of the question. Is Cohen, do you think, you know the big picture and how what the thinking is up there. Do you think Cohen is more than an asterisk in the bigger conversation about President Trump? I think the answer is yes. I mean, he was there on a personal basis. He wasn't there on a political basis, and he was in the room on a, on a, a lot of important discussions were made. Now, I don't know the criminality of all the things that, that he may or may not have been part of, um, but uh, he knows the facts. He knows where the bodies are buried, so to speak. Now, if there's criminality there, so be it. And even if there's criminality, the next question is, is the criminality is the president himself directly involved? Mm -hmm. And if so, does it rise to the level of an impeachable mm -hmm. offense? Mm -hmm. uh, many of us thought that uh, what President Clinton did was wrong, but it was not an impeachable offense. Um, and I think that you're going to hear a lot of that from the Republicans this so time. So have, have you seen enough to, to make that conclusion? Or do you, do you no, feel that there's yet. more, there's, there's still more information you need I think to get? I think there's a lot more information. There's a lot more information. Do you, um, do you believe what he said? I mean, how much do you believe of what he said? I, I After believe all, he's what a he said. Liar. I mean, it's hard to see how he has a benefit right now. He's been sentenced. Um, there's no, whatever deal he made, he made. I don't see why he has a reason to lie at this point in time. Uh, at the same time, I mean, it's normal when you have a criminal activity, you have to talk to criminals to find out what's going on. That's mm -hmm. not new. That's mm -hmm. if, if, if the standard is you can never talk to anybody who ever lied, there would be no criminal case ever in the history but, of this but country. But you heard, you heard the argument on the floor for the lying. On, you know, well, well, he's lied to us before. Why wouldn't he lie to us now? That's, that's exactly the argument you hear in every criminal case in America. Uh, the defense always says that about any witness to any crime. You don't have Mother Teresa doing crimes. Uh, you, you have other criminals doing crimes. You have to find somebody who's willing to talk, and then you have to weigh them the, the degree of how much you trust them and, and why they're doing it in this particular case. If he hadn't been sentenced yet, you could say, well, maybe he's doing it for a smaller sentence. He's already been sentenced. There's nothing on the table for him. There's, he could have remained silent, and his life doesn't change. He's clearly doing it because he wants to get it off his chest. Well, while it was happening, the president was in Asia. All of this happening, and Mr. Trump is halfway around the world meeting with Kim Jong-un. He came back to Washington, came home to America, empty-handed you could hear the sighs of many foreign policy experts when that happened when it comes to our place in the world do you think this president has truly altered America's future what do you think uh, not yet um, look I, I'm one of the people that have actually given the president credit for talking to North Korea in the past I hope it comes to something uh, he made a premature announcement that we have peace on the peninsula now uh, but that's not unusual in the political world. I hope that it comes to something. It has come to not much, if anything, at mm -hmm. the moment. Um, I hope it does. I hope they don't just give it up. I hope it is more than just a prop. But um, I'm willing to give the president more time well, to do it, this. It, right now, it, at least visually, it's nothing more than a, than a handshake in Singapore or dinner in yeah, Vietnam. That's I mean, right. So far, so far, there's been nothing but 
you know, like anything else, if I, I hope they don't walk away from the table. I hope they have more discussions. I hope it does come to something. Uh, as I understand it, though, thus far, the sanctions that we have put on are still in place, um, and, and the international sanctions on North Korea are still in place, so n not much has changed. Um, on this one, i, I, I got to give the president uh, at least a pass at the moment, an incomplete. So good that he went, not that uh, it was a waste of time? Um, yeah, it's never a waste of time to talk to people. I, I, I've, I've always been the person I get in trouble with some because I've always thought that um, even people that you totally disagree with, people that you hate, people that you consider to be the scum of the earth, um, unless you can do something about it, talking is not the worst thing in the world. And it, as long as you don't give anything away and, and you don't pretend that's a victory in and of itself. But you don't get anywhere without talking. So I have no problem at all with him talking to him. Let's talk about uh, you watching all of this from the sidelines for the first <laughs> time in, what, two decades? Um, how does it feel? How are you adapting to life after politics? In uh, pretty general? well, actually. It's been it's been interesting. You never know what you're going to do. I've always been the person who lived their life at 100 miles an hour, and um, now I've slowed down. Um, I didn't know how I'd feel about it, but I kind of like it a little bit. And um, so thus far, any it's immediate been great. plans on what you're going to do next? Um, yeah, uh, by, by by the time this is on the air, I will have uh, started one job and about to start another job tomorrow. I'm doing some uh, some part-time things um, that will fill my time, and that's what I want. I didn't want to do another 100% full-time gig. We just showed some video of Ayanna Presley, and she was in the she was one of the what 40 some odd questioners right. during the Michael Cohen mm -hmm. 42, thing. I and think. she's she's had the national spotlight for the moment that she won. She was seen questioning Michael Cohen this week. Has she struck gold, or is this dangerous territory? This is this is her in the in the committee, well, by the way. I, and that's Ted Reinstein. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know that. I'll leave that to others to, to assess. I mean, from what I see, she's, she's doing fine for typical freshman, um, learning a way around, and, and good luck to her. And you don't have any particular advice for her, having been in that seat for some I, so I tend not to give advice unless asked by people who want advice. Uh, <laughs> it, it, the world is full of people who are willing to give advice that is not wanted. So. It is many months since the election, but did you ever get a chance to sit down with her or talk to her on the phone Just or talk anything? briefly on the phone. It was her choice. And the fact that the House is controlled by the Democrats, do you miss the opportunity not, not to be in the middle of that environment? Um, the answer is possibly. It's too early to tell. If the Democrats actually do things that I hope that they can and will do, yeah, I will have missed it, especially when it comes, I mean, it looks like the most likely thing that they might be able to do in a bipartisan way is maybe a real transportation bill, uh, infrastructure bill. If they do that, yeah, I would have mm -hmm. loved to be in the middle of it. That was the whole reason mm -hmm. for running for re-election. Mm -hmm. I would have been in a great position to help the Commonwealth, and uh, so I still hope they do it. Mm -hmm. We saw House uh, Speaker Nancy Pelosi winning many of these early battles with uh, President Trump mm -hmm. this week. The House told him he can't exert executive privilege when it comes to the wall without congressional approval. But in the end, Trump is quite likely to win that battle, especially since it's yet to go to the Senate. Is this likely to continue when it comes to hard issues? Is the president really got the upper hand here? And there's very very little that House Democrats can do to push him to do. Well, I, again, we have split government. We have a Democratic House, a Republican Senate, and a Republican in, in the White House. Um, that's hard to tell. But first of all, you never underestimate any president. They have lots of tools in the toolbox. And anyone who underestimates Nancy Pelosi um, does it at their peril. She is uh, one of the smartest, toughest people I've ever known. Um, she understands the legislative process. She knows the leverage that she has to uh, create pressure. Um, so we'll see. It's going to be, uh, from a political basis, it's going to be a lot of fun for the next couple so, of years. So was that statement about Nancy Pelosi directed to anyone in particular, or is that was it just like a general statement? No, no. In other words, Seth Moulton, you know, no, take no, 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 no. I mean, everybody has their own opinion. I, I've, I've, I've always thought that. I've, yeah, look, I thought there was a time when Nancy should have left as well, um, when, when we lost the House. Mm -hmm. uh, when we won the House back, I think she earned the right to stay there. I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm, you know, you love the sports analogy, so do I. Mm -hmm. You don't fire a manager when you win. Yep. You fire a manager when you lose. And that doesn't mean the manager's bad. It just means it's not working out, and that's the way it was. And when we lost the House to a, in a big fashion, I thought the manager should have should voluntarily go. stepped down. Yeah. Uh, but when you win, you give the manager a big huzzah and, and you move forward. We just won the house. You probably didn't think you'd get the OTR pop quiz now. I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't have to. Oh, I see. I see. This is the way you're going to play it, huh? All right, it's time for the quiz. Somerville is known for its hills, and you were born in the Spring Hill neighborhood. There's also Winter Hill. So we have some graphics here. Uh, take a look at this. Multiple choice. Which of the following is not a hill Come in on, Somerville? That's easy. All right, go well, ahead. Cobble Hill is gone, but we still call it area. It was dug out. It was actually part of the back bay right now. Uh, Barrett Hill, there's never been a Barrett Hill in so long. Ding, 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 ding. You are, boy, it was easy for you. All right, all right, see if this is tougher. Question two. In 1914, 
Archibald Query invented a food product that has become a pop culture icon. No multiple choice. Which one do you got? No multiple, oh, no multiple choice. You choice? don't have a multiple right. choice. The you only thing I can think of is fluff. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you know what? I wonder if these are fluff questions from the former mayor of Somerville. I love marshmallow fluff, by the way, with the peanut butter. I absolutely course. love it. I, you're going to love this. I tried to bring some to my colleagues years ago. When, yeah. And they they confiscated it at the TSA. They said it was a liquid. <laughs> I'm on their side. I think this stuff is disgusting. We'll be right back. They confiscated it.